What's up everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 9 of our Tic-Tac-Toe AI which we're making on Scratch 3. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just finished coding. Now I have to interject here that if you've not watched parts 1 to 8, please watch them before you come here because as you can see, I'm picking up from where I left off and for this video to make sense, you need to have watched the previous ones. I will leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, then you have to be pleased to know that this is going to be the last and final video in this whole Tic-Tac-Toe AI series. And for those of you who watched the original part 9 series and you're wondering why I'm doing this again, it's simply because I missed a few things in the previous part 9 and also due to some sloppy editing, it wasn't really a great video. So I just thought I would make an update video and probably, you know, delete that one so that everything is cleared up and there are no errors in the code. All right, so let's start. So what I'm going to do now is go to the com sprite and uh, I'm going to set up a couple of danger pauses. Uh, actually not the com sprite but the initializer where we're setting up the danger positions and then I will go to the com sprite. So first you can head over to variables and create a couple of new lists. So we'll need three more lists for this video and you know pretty much for the entire AI. So the first one you can call it danger pause 11 and I suppose you, uh, we can just copy and paste you know since they're all kind of the same lists it's just 11, 12 and 13. And 11 and 12 are going to be pretty long, but 13 is going to be the easy one. So I guess I'll code 13 first. So you can duplicate one of those for a second. And you can change this to from danger pause 10 to danger pause 13 for each one of these uh, three replace items. And once you're here, what you can do is replace, um, you know, this X and O's or rather just the positions of the X and O's. And the particular danger pause that we're looking for is this one. So for example, Let's just say we play on the square and then after the computer moves on the center, we move on eight and now you can see that we have a double and thus we can win. So in order to avoid that, what we need to do is have an item on six and have an item on eight. So this is going to be one danger pause, but it's going to be danger pause 13. Now we can duplicate this once more, rather we can just duplicate two of this right away to save some coding time and we can change this to 11. So 11 and 12 are going to be a slightly longer, you know, kind of danger pause. So you can duplicate this, um, you know, two blocks of code once again and put it for 11. We'll probably need it for, uh, we'll probably need it for 12 as well, but I will show you the position first. So change this to 11 and let's go. So let's play A or uh, let's press A. And now I start off with one and after that I go to six in the hopes of a double. But after the computer plays it at two and I play it at eight, you can see that once again, we have a double and we win. So in order to make sure that is fixed, we first need to replace first of all item one with X, then we need to replace item six with X, then we need to replace item eight with X, which is already done. And as far as our O items are concerned, we need five O and we'll also need O on two. So those two are the two things that we need. And next you can also do it in the exact, you know, uh, opposite way. So for example, you can start on three, um, and you can then go on four and you'd have pretty much the same, you know, way of winning. Uh, you can't do it the other way because for example, if I try to do something like this, the computer just ruins everything and the player can no longer win. So just those two um, danger positions that we need to fix. So as far as the, sec uh, as the second one is concerned, it's going to be item number three um, with X, item number um, four with X and uh, obviously item number eight with X. And as far as our, our O's are concerned, we'll have item four as O and also item two as O. Okay, so now we can change this to uh, from danger pause 13 to danger pause 12. I probably should have done this, you know, first before I made all the changes so that while duplicating it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have to do all of this one by one. But anyway, now that's done. And uh, there's also one more thing that I want you to change and that's a mistake which I made uh, in the, computer, in the computer sprite uh, within our danger position. So you wanna go to uh, scroll all the way down for danger pause one to 10. You can probably edit that and change it to one to 13 since there are 13 danger positions and then click okay. Um, no big deal, but uh, it's basically danger pause four, okay? So in this case, I've set the move to be eight, 
but you need to set it to be six. And if you set it to eight, you'll get a big, big error. And it's not really pretty when you see that happen. The game basically malfunctions. Okay, so just change that here. And now you can have a couple of more if else's. So let us pull this if then out uh, and drop in an if else like this. Okay, so let's put those conditions as they were. And let's duplicate that. We'll just keep the if else. We need it in the end, um, but duplicate this twice. So danger pause 11, that's danger pause 12, and we should have this one for 13. So let's quickly change those things. So danger pause 11, this is going to be danger pause 12, and let's duplicate this for danger pause 13. There we go. So uh, first of all, if the danger position is 11, then we won't uh, want to make the move to 8. What we need to do instead is to change that move from 8 to 7. And we can pretty much do the same thing in case danger position is 12 as well. Um, so in case, actually no, uh, never mind. So that was 13. So in case it's 12, you need to make sure that the move is nine. Um, and finally, you can just duplicate this, you know, once more. And this is what I was talking about. So in case danger position is 13, we set the move to seven. So let's now try it out. Those were a couple of changes we made. Let's press A. So let's try out the, you know, main bug first. And as you can see that, um, that idiotic move still happens. So there's obviously something wrong with my code and I will go through it once and then be right back. All right, so I figured out what was going on and it was a simple fact that I hadn't initialized the lists completely. So for example, it never deleted all of the items and, you know, cleaned that list up. So all you have to do is to add in, you know, two lines of code. So um, no, just three lines of code. Okay, so duplicate this once, throw off all the remaining code. You just need three of these deletes and you can add danger pause 11, danger pause 12, and danger pause 13 to the delete list. So add that in like that. And you can also head over down where we're clearing, you know, we're just adding empty stuff to all of those lists and add um, add them, add the empty stuff to danger pause 11, 12, and 13 as well. Uh, obviously we need to put that back into that repeat nine loop. Otherwise there is no point of that code. And this should make sure that our code works perfectly. So now let's press the, a key and now let's try to do the same thing and now you can see that our AI is smarter and it can tie the game. So similarly we can try the same thing out with the other bug that we were working on and now the AI doesn't let us win. So finally let's test out the last and final bug I believe. I'm not sure if I did this the first time so I think this was the bug which I hadn't tested. So there we go it plays on 9 and there's pretty much no hope of you know the player winning at all now. So that's finally pretty much all we need for our AI. And now we can get into our end screens. So now we can start by painting a new sprite. So click on paint. And uh, once you're inside the costumes, it's fairly simple to do it. You just need, you know, uh, a paintbrush and uh, do it in a, uh, in a slightly lower saturation so that the color stands out a lot. Um, in case it's the X that wins, I'm going to do it in a slightly reddish color. And in case it's O that wins, I'm going to do it in a slightly more bluish color, but it's still going to be pretty light. Okay, so make sure you do it uh, like that. So I'm going to call this X wins in case of X. And this may look light with the white background, but trust me, it's going to look pretty great in the black background. So now let's make that a little bit bigger or actually, you know, way bigger. Uh, maybe not so far, uh, not, not that big. Maybe I'll make it slightly smaller. And you could do yourself a favor by hiding the thumbnail and then putting it on top to see how it fits. And I think this looks pretty great as far as our, uh, as far as our X wins is concerned. And maybe I'll increase the saturation a bit so that it looks a little bit more uh, reddish in color. And I think this is perfect. So I'm going to change the font quickly from sans uh, sheriff to handwriting. I think that gives a little more stylish effect. And you can also increase and boost the outline if you want. So that's with a black outline. Uh, I would have to make it a red outline by just, you know, going through and selecting that color with the color picker. So this should look a lot better now. So maybe I'll go with, I guess, three as an outline. This looks great. And now we can also duplicate this for our O. Um, but before you do that, make sure you rename the costume to be X. And that will play a crucial role when we're switching costumes. So just change it to X. Duplicate this, change it to O, and now we can change this X wins to O wins. So put it as O, and we can also change this entire color to a bluish color. So let us make a nice dark blue, and I think this looks purplish. So let's make it a 
darker blue like this. Okay, so I wasn't even changing the color. Let us go with a dark blue like that. And I guess uh, the point was, you know, the inside was getting changed, but the, but the outside part wasn't. So in case you zoom in enough, you should see the change. So let me dim down my saturation and also make it a more cyan blue color so that, yeah, this should work. So color 50, saturation 35. Oh God, I wasn't changing it here. So color 50, uh, I'm sorry, saturation 35 and color 50. This should be pretty great for a combination. Uh, there we go. So I guess I'll leave it there. And we also need to do the same thing for the outline. So click on this, then use the color picker and select the center. And you should have a pretty great Owens as well. Now, finally, we can, uh, we can zoom out and center this guy like that. This works out great. And let's, uh, let's do the stalemate as well. So stalemate is when nobody wins. And I'll call this costume stalemate because we're going to switch to it directly. We're not going to do it in the form of a variable. And um, yeah, that's all we need. So let us call this stalemate. Stalemate. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to change this color. So let us make it a nice little pinkish color. I guess I'm going to just keep the saturation as it is. Maybe I'll change it a bit. So let me now jump in. Use the color picker once again to choose the color. And there we go. That's pretty much all you need. Maybe you can boost the outline as well so that, you know, it looks as good for the ovens as well as, um, you know, as good as it did for the X-Wins. I'm going to leave it at two. I think it already looks pretty bright to me. And let's now get into the code. So first of all, when we receive, I'm sorry, when the green flag is clicked, we wouldn't really want to do anything besides just going to the correct location. So you can grab a go to and um, X0, Y140 should work fine. I'm going to uh, call this end screen because that's pretty much what it does. And then we can hide the end screen. So hide it. First, we can start off with a when we receive stalemate. Uh, and when we do, we can switch the costume to stalemate. And after we're done with that, we can show ourselves. Now, there's a quick caveat here that we need to do before we stop all the scripts. And that is to make sure that, you know, the draw animation is completely done. So what we need to do is to add in a small time lag to make sure that the animation finishes before we stop the program. I'm going to give it four seconds. I think that's plenty. And then we can say uh, stop all. Next, we can duplicate this when I receive message. And um, now instead of stalemate, what you need to do is change that to game over. And this time, instead of switching costume to stalemate, we switch costume to side because it is the side which wins that we need to switch costume to. Once again, it's all the same code. You don't really even have to change anything. And that's pretty much it. So now let's hit the start. Uh, let's hit the green flag. And now let's just try battling with our AI. I'm not really going to do much. I'm just going to let the AI win. And as you can see, we had a simple end screen with an O wins on top. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be your entire tic-tac-toe AI. I have had a pretty big blast making this series. And I do hope that you've enjoyed your final product as well as the experience. If you've enjoyed this game series, please consider clicking on the playlist on your screen right here and that'll take you to a brand new game segment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.